Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Kim's Hospital Q3 FY24 Earning Conference Call hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchdown phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Jivani from IIFL Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Rahul from IFL Institutional Equities. I welcome you all to the quarter three earnings conference call of uh, Kim's Hospitals. Uh, from Kim's, we have with us Dr. Bhaskar Rao Bolineni, uh, Founder and Managing Director. Uh, Dr. Abhinay Bolineni, Executive Director and CEO, and Mr. Sachin Salvi, CFO. Uh, over to you, sir, for your opening comments. <coughs> Good morning to all of you. I welcome to the first meeting of investors in the new year. I take this opportunity to wish all of you a happy, healthy, and a prosperous new year ahead. Now I will proceed to a phase of you, the financials and operational results, and also other developments. To start with the financial results, the consolidated revenue for the nine months ended December 2023 stood at INR 1874 crore, showing an increase of 14% and year on year. EBITDA for the nine months ended December 2023, 491 crore, registering an increase of 6.3% year on year. The gross revenue is in INR 609 crore for the Q3 FI24, recording a growth of 7.1% on year on year and a decline of 7.1% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. The EBITDA is 150 crores for the Q3 FY24, a decline of 4.6% year-on-year, and a 16.5% quarter-on-quarter basis. The EBITDA margin is 24.7%, which is 27.7% in quarter 3, 23, and 27.5% in quarter 2, financial year 24. That is an INR of 77 crore in Q3, FI24, against INR 82 crore in, and INR 101 crore in Q3, FI23, and Q2, FI24, respectively. There will be a little bit of this marginal, this one, but I will go into the operational issues. Both inpatient and outpatient volumes recorded a growth of 3.6% and a 2.7% on the year-on-year -year basis and a decline of 7.1% and a 7.3% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. The total 3.92 lakh of OPD consults were done during the quarter. The bed occupancy in quarter 3 was 72.2%. The average revenue per operative bed increased by 3.1% year-on-year basis and declined by 1.3% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. The average revenue per patient increased by 4.8% on a year-on-year basis and marginally declined by 0.4% quarter-on-quarter basis. Q3 is a traditionally lean period on account of festivals. Further, the festivals, the elections to state assembly in Telangana, and a cyclone in Andhra Pradesh had their impact. That's why the decline in quarter three was happening. The other developments, Kim Sunshine is shifted to our own spacious premises on the main road of Begumpet. The location and the size will lead to increased patient flow. This is also another reason where during the shifting, there will be a little bit of decline. Our Nasik unit is expected to be open in the first quarter of 2025, most probably in May and June. The most important things for our organization is the academic events apart from the financial results. The academic activities provide necessary impetus for the hospital in adopting new skills and technologies, enhancing patient comfort and clinical outcomes. 
gyms are called top priority to this aspect and our doctors are encouraged you to take active part in academic activities across the world to presentation of papers contribution to national and international journals and participation in workshops and academics i will mention few of the such highlights dr sarath chandra mauli veeravalli a clinical director department of rheumatology and clinical immunology of kims is presented a case at the global meet the experts the rheumatoid arthritis arthritis event during the american college of rheumatology convergence 2023 in san diego in november 23 it is a wonderful opportunity and his contribution was well received and appreciated in the global community the indian rheumatology association also honored dr veeravalli in november 2023 with the iria colcon oration award in recognition of his outstanding contribution to field of rheumatology teaching research and professional services dr naga lakshmi the senior consultant pain physician of kims presented her work on a stellate ganglion block and t1 sympathectomy for refractory ventricular tachycardia at the southeast asia dct cardiology conference held at mumbai such a procedure was first of its kind in the world and the case series were published jointly by dr ikrev rao the senior consultant in cardiologist and electrophysiologist and dr k nagalakshmi in the prestigious europace journal kim sir vascular trainees have participated in the program conducted by vascular society of india at mumbai and we backed the second prize as the best training vascular institute across india the diagnosis of whether a child is able to hear or not can be done right at birth if the defect is detected early and rectified the permanent damage can be rectified many parents are ignorant of this aspect and the child suffers a lifetime of silence to create awareness on the subject and to highlight the latest technologies available kim's kingsway hospital at nagpur conducted a, a deafness awareness program inaugurated by the rss chief dr mohan bhagwat and attended by various experts ngos social activists and others the other one is the other a three day workshop on urogynecology was held at kims in association with the upia called sprinter summit 2023 with participation of internal international experts in the field this event was inaugurated by dr tamil sai governor of telangana state in association with obstetrics and gynecological society of hyderabad kims conducted a fertility conference with participation from experts in the field to highlight the latest developments pain is a difficult for anyone to bear and it makes the sickness horrifying kims conducted a two day workshop to update the healthcare professionals on the techniques and modalities available for pain management several doctors from within and outside the state participated in the mega workshop arthritis is a common problem nowadays affecting all classes of people on the occasion of the world arthritis day on october 8 kims hospital conducted a arthritis awareness walk in association with indian rheumatology association the event evoked good response with great participation breast cancer awareness month was conducted in october 2024 with a good publicity illuminating public places including governor's rajbhavan in pink color besides having various seminars and meeting arousing public interest pfizer india joined hands with kims hospital to establish a center of excellence for adult vaccination given the rising cases of respiratory illness the center will reinforce immunization against vaccine preventable diseases such as pneumococcal disease hepatitis a and b human papilloma virus and influenza encouraged by the overwhelming response to kims cuddles kondapur an exclusive mother and child center kims cuddles wing is set up at sikandrabad also to provide such exclusive care to mother and child in new initiative in sikandrabad as i mentioned before 
being a healthcare provider we not only provide we also need to create a sort of an awareness into the public where they can able to approach the right person for the right doctor so that they can able to unnecessarily spend lot of money that's why we create this arthritis awareness program the breast breast cancer program and the vaccination prevention is better than cure that is the reason we also take part lot of awareness programs every time even including the papilloma carcinoma and even the urogynic department which most of the people are not aware of it kims hosted the first sign conference to be held in india in january 2024 society for image guided neuro interventions in short sign is an international body comprising of scientists engineers and clinicians exploring technological advances in various fields including interventional neuro radiology mri pet neuropharmacology and artificial intelligence the conference was brought 125 neurosciences experts from 12 nations to deliberate cutting edge advances in the field this is the first sign conference to be held in india and kims is the proud host for that so these are all our achievements of prevention and creating awareness of the health diseases now what we have been achieved having been disease has been occurred how in the remote places where we can able to treat how kims is contributing to the society first ever case in the world done at kims hyderabad a 3 day old neonate was diagnosed with a combination of two very major lesions in the heart called transposition of great arteries and a total anomalous pulmonary venous connection both these problems are surgical emergencies and the baby would not have survived if the surgery is not done a few such cases have been reported in the literature however they are all above one week or even a few months of age but not on a 3 day old baby dr anil kumar senior consultant pediatric cardiac surgeon performed the day long surgery the review is done after two months and the baby is growing well it all depends upon how we can able to improvise our healthcare in a year on year basis to handle the more complex and more advanced techniques in kims kondapur the doctors and staff at kims kondapur went out of their way to learn sign language to be able to communicate with the deaf mute parents of a child the couple brought their prematurely born daughter to the hospital after they lost her twin the baby was hospitalized for 76 days because of multiple complications over 10 days three doctors four junior doctors and four nurses learned the sign language to be able to communicate with the mom and explain her and explain her the condition and progress of the child and measure her these staff taught the sign language to other members of the team also this is called walking the extra mile now those are parents are relieved yes of age the only hope is liver transplantation responding to the family's dire need the hospital stepped forward and sponsored the procedure almost entirely the child weighing a mere 6.4 kg underwent liver transplant procedure for a grueling 10 hours by a multidisciplinary team this is the effect of a resources that are available across the kims group can be best utilized and provide a proper care in the remote places too a 30 year old young man was without a heartbeat for a over an hour when he suffered a cardiac arrest after remaining in icu for 45 days he was discharged and the case is considered a medical miracle as per american heart association cpr is stopped after 40 minutes if there is no return of heart beat in this case doctors choose to overshoot the threshold limit considering the age of the patient and other conditions 
and continued the CPR with defibrillation shocks till the heart function was restored. It is a great achievement, a miracle in the uh, <coughs> medical field itself. Kim's Kingsway Hospital, Nagpur, successfully used pressurized intraperitoneal aerosol chemotherapy, generally used in abdominal malignancy, to treat a 72-year-old woman with ovarian cancer. Why it is mentioned here is because this is the first time such a procedure has been done in Nagpur and Central India for advanced cancer along with peritoneal spread. Kim Savera Hospital, Anantapur, Mycenae Gravis crisis, a rare complication of Mycenae Gravis, was successfully treated at Kim Savera, Anantapur. This disease is very rare and serious, with incidence of 2 to 5 cases per 1 lakh population and a mortality rate up to 30%. The name disease become well known about 30 years back when Amita Bachchan was diagnosed with this and news attracted the attention of whole nation. Back then, such treatments were available only in centers like Mumbai. Today we are able to treat them even in remote areas like Anantapur, the patient was treated successfully and discharged. In another case, Kim Savera doctor saved the life of a 68-year-old patient suffering with breathing issues due to a blood clot in his lung blood vessels. Due to patient's many comorbidities, the doctors opted for a mechanical thrombectomy using advanced Numbra Indigo Aspiration System to use it for the first time in Rylesima region. In another first in the region, Kim Savera doctors performed a retrograde intrarenal surgery on a three-year baby, three-year-old baby who had a big stone in his kidney measuring 21 millimeters, which is a rare condition. This is the first of its kind surgery on such a young kid in the whole of Rylesima region. Kim's Karnol. Doctors at Kim's Hospital at Karnol successfully performed a complex surgery to remove a 9cm stone from the urinary tract of a 6-year-old boy. It is first occurrence of such a large stone among children in Royal Sima region. The entire surgery was conducted free of cost under ROVC scheme. Kim's Icon Vizak. A remarkable story of medical expertise and resilience took at place. Kim Scuddles, Vizak. When a pair of twins arrived at just 27 weeks gestation, both infants required ventilation support at birth, battling hyperglycemia, anemia, and feed intolerance. Through personalized treatment plans and round-the-clock care, the twins began to thrive. Most importantly, their crucial stay in the neonatal intensive care unit lasted for a very short time of 61 days. It shows the immense potential of a premature babies and the critical role of the specialized care. Some of the famous personalities who were prematurely born were Winston Churchill, who became the Prime Minister of UK, and the famous scientist Albert Einstein and Sir Isaac Newton. A six-year young girl who battled multiple organ failure was treated and saved at Kim's Cuddles Vizak. The girl with a rapidly deteriorating health condition was admitted and put on mechanical ventilation. She developed a severe blood infection, sepsis caused by consumption of street food. In a tough battle spanning of 20 days, She encountered various complications, including kidney injury, anemia, low platelets, and electrolyte imbalances. The advanced approach, coupled with meticulous adjustments and monitoring eventually saw a returning to normalcy. All these cases received wide coverage in the media, being rare and complex cases treated at various centers of camps that include urban centers and remote areas, so that many of the people aware of these type of diseases come in time to the hospitals and get cured. All these cases received 
I would conclude now thanking you for your continuous trust and support. I am confident that we will be able to post good results for March 2024, and we are very happy that we are on the same track that we promised, and we will continue to deliver good results in the coming years. I will keep you apprised of any key developments. Thank you for your patient hearing. Sorry for anything because of my sore throat. I could not able to convey properly. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. And the first question is from the line of Dara Patwan from Smiths Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and good morning all. So my first question is re uh, related to Telang Telangana unit. So we have seen margins have slipped. Uh, significantly in the quarter to 28.8% and this has been lowest since nine quarters. Although nothing has changed on the ARPOV and occupancy front, so what is the reason for that? Are we taking any additional cost over here? And will this continue? Is this a new base or there was some one-off in the quarter? Yeah, that's my first question. <laughs> So, uh, as far as uh, Telangana and Andhra both are concerned, uh, there has been some sometime expenses. If you look at uh, the revenue growth in both the markets, have been uh, healthy as far as, through, uh, as far as the year on year growth is concerned. But on a quarter on quarter, there has been a decline in revenue both in Telangana and uh, Andhra. They have led to multiple factors. One, because of uh, strong election in Telangana, there is a dip in elected work. And uh, a couple of uh, doctors during the last quarter, uh, senior doctors were also on uh, leave. Uh, plus, there has been a dip in the transplant revenue uh, in, in the December month. Uh, so, all of these uh, factors have led to a decline in revenue in Telangana uh, uh, kings, as well as a slight decline in revenue in AP kings because of uh, the cyclone affected by that. Uh, the other centers have fairly uh, done well, but there has been a significant dip in revenue from the buy side effect. So, um, and we had invested a lot of uh, uh, costs in doctors as, um, uh, because the doctor cost has gone up. And because of the op uh, decline in revenue, operating leverage has played out. And that is why you see a dip in the EBITDA margin. And uh, there has also been a one-time expense towards uh, renovating and launching, renovating some of the Kim's hospitals as well as launching uh, the Cuddles brand at uh, King's uh, Sikhamadai. Uh, these are one-time non-recurring expenditures towards the to a tune of almost uh, five and a half to six crores in, in just the King's and uh, King's cluster, which is in Telangana and AP. Uh, we will continue to have one more uh, such one-time expenditure in Q4, uh, and then from Q1 onwards it will normalize. These are largely expenditure that we will go towards launching uh, things coming as a brand, plus renovating uh, some of our existing facilities uh, just to bring them up to speed to the current market and to add some uh, additional spaces. Okay, sir, that was quite helpful in a detailed answer. So, second thing was what could be the ARPOB of cuddles that we have started in Sikandrabad? So, will the ARPOB be similar to other children hospitals? Any color on that, if you could provide? Yeah, it should be uh, very similar to other uh, civil hospitals. Okay, so in the range of around 40, 45,000, uh, right? Correct. Uh, Correct. Okay. So, last question is on LACPO unit. So, we are near to a target of 17 to 18% EBITDA margin. So, from here on, what kind of growth and margin expansion are we looking for Nagpur unit in the next two, three years? And do you think the same success story can be re replicated to Nasik unit as well? Because even that is in Central India. And no, since you have expanded outside South India, this was the first hospital uh, we were seeing. 
So do you think the same success story could be replicated in the Central India for NASA unit as well? Yeah, I think we're very confident that we'll be able to do the same, uh, if not better. Uh, but yeah, the turnaround that last year has been quite encouraging. And um, uh, I think in, in the next couple of quarters, we should also be able to hit a 20-25% kind of an EBITDA margin in, in the Nagpur facility. Uh, and then on it will probably stabilize anywhere between 25% to 26%. Okay, sir. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Lakshmi Nyaran from Tunga Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so a couple of things. One is that, um, you know, I uh, just wanted to understand what is the split between the um, the healthcare revenues and the pharma revenues for the nine months? Between healthcare revenue and pharma revenue? Yeah, yeah, because you actually split uh, in terms of the, the revenues you get from the pharmacy and how much you get from the uh, healthcare? Um, you don't, I don't have that number of time, but we'll share that with you separately after the call. Got it, got it. Uh, so then in, in terms of uh, the, uh, you know, if you look at the RPOP, uh, what are the levers you are thinking to increase the RPOP from the current level of around 13, 31,000 at a group level? I think, uh, the continuation to keep adding more and more specialties, like for example in Andhra, uh, all of Andhra hospitals do not have oncology today. So in the next couple of years, they're going to add oncology, which will further, which will increase the ARPOP. So the ARP, oncology ARPOP will be around 25,000 to begin with. So that will overall pull up the ARPOP uh, in the Andhra hospitals. Uh, likewise, uh, we start to introduce more tertiary care work in Andhra or in, in the other facilities of KIMS. All of this, along with uh, price rise, uh, will continue to increase the asset. Got it. Uh, so, in, in, in Andhra Pradesh, our utilization is around 79%. I mean, the, the occupancy is around 79%. And it was almost 84% when, you know, for the last... Uh, um, you know, sorry, uh, we, we are almost uh, at uh, 78% and last quarter it was around 84%. In, in general, what is the maximum you, uh, occupancy you can actually uh, increase to before it would be like um, the top would be around 90% or uh, what is the... What is the 80, you... 80% is an indication that you need to add more bed capacity. So, and, that, and that's one of the reasons why in Andhra and Telangana we are adding more bed capacity to the existing facility. Got it, got it, got it. And and what is the mix of uh, the, uh, uh, the the payer mix in the Andhra hospitals, in the, in the Andhra cluster, to be specific? So around sixty percent of it is cash and insurance, and the remaining uh, uh, thirty to forty percent will be state government and central government scheme. Got it, got it. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Mathur from HDFC Mitchell Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi all. Good morning. Um, sir, I have a few set of questions. Uh, my first question is on the mix in AP in Telangana. Uh, you did mention that the transplant surgeries were a bit less this particular quarter. Um, but, but historically what we have seen is that our pops tend to be better in 3Q while there is an occupancy dip. But the mix tends to be better. So uh, what exactly has happened on the RPOP side in third quarter in both AP and Telangana, why there's a dip on a sequential basis, apart from uh, the dip in uh, transplants? So I think transplants has been one of the uh, key factors, uh, uh, Mithil. And also we have seen in Q3 a lot of the surgical work got postponed. Uh, that the uh, RPOP were very high in November because of uh, festival and then uh, uh, the state election, we have seen a significant uh, delay or postponement of the elective work. And also in December, um, you know, there was a strong flu 
uh, because of which uh, uh, a lot of these admissions were again having to be postponed because of uh, infection. And uh, you know, all of them started happening, and then you know, the whole year end started, and and that's why we've seen a, de- a decline in the surgical workload that is happening. Plus, ARPOP, which you know, are the both um, these two are both uh, strong contributors to a higher ARPOP. So, you do you see that uh, a lot of this is lost revenues, or you or do you see that a lot of this work is coming back uh, in in the in the more near term? Yes, I think we started seeing things improving in, so usually, I mean, it's a trend after December 25th to Jan 15, there is a decline. Uh, and, but we are from post Jan 15, we have seen an uptick in work in, in across all our uh, hospitals. And if you see actually in, in, in Andhra, uh, the revenues have been more or less uh, stable except for the big impact that we have had in the coastal belt, which three of our hospitals got impacted, Rajamini, Vaisak, and Srinakulam. But otherwise, the other hospitals have been fairly, uh, have fairly performed well. Uh, Telangana largely because of the election and uh, a lot of these factors, uh, there has been a decline. But January has, has been quite uh, good or in line with our expectation. Okay, got it. Uh, and, and, and on the revenue side. Okay. Uh, and sticking to the, both these uh, clusters further, uh, what kind of ARPOV increase should one build, uh, let's say, two th- in a two to three year time frame? Uh, is it going to be more pricing led, or do you think that the mix can change uh, in in the coming two three years? So, any thoughts on ARPOV improvement in the coming two three years? So the case mix, case mix in Andhra is definitely going to change. Uh, there's no doubt about it uh, because uh, we are we're adding a lot of uh, uh, we're adding a lot of focus on cancer and mother and child in Andhra. So uh, in that way, the case mix will change to uh, uh, will get skewed a lot towards uh, oncology and uh, uh, a little bit towards mother and child. So that will uh, improve the ARPOM. I think a healthy uh, uh, coupled with a price hike and insurance price hikes, uh, we should look at a good five to seven percent. Uh, our top uh, growth, other than the volume growth. Okay, got it. Uh, and on the occupancy, I'm looking at occupancy and operationalized beds. Uh, obviously, this quarter is subdued at 61% in Telangana and uh, 70 or Sorry, Nikhil, could you come again, please? I couldn't hear you. Is this better? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm talking about occupancy on operating beds. Uh, this quarter obviously is quite subdued at 61 percent in in in, Telang- in Telangana and 70 odd percent in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, but what are the peak occupancy levels that uh, you can deliver in, in both these clusters? I think in Andhra uh, we are comfortable up to 80 85 percent, uh, uh, and in Telangana also we are comfortable at 80 percent. And in both these markets we are adding beds. So. Uh, in the next uh, one two years, we will be uh, you know, adding a lot of beds that will ease out a lot of pressure on occupancy. Okay, got it. Um, on Mumbai, uh, can you share some update on what's happening there? Uh, I don't think I have come across the nature of financing in, in the, of that project uh, in the investor presentation or in a recent release. So, can you just clear some air on on what's happening there? What's the total capex? How much will be funded by Kim? How much? Uh, will be by the partner. So, as far as the timeline of the project is concerned, there has been no impact on the timeline. The work on ground has started, uh, like we had mentioned in our previous call, and we are on track to uh, operational the facility, operationalize the facility by end of the year, as we are committed uh, in Q4 of 2025. Uh, so, uh, work on ground is, is fine, but there has been a delay in stitching up uh, the funding plan. Uh, so, by uh, end of this month, if uh, the alternative funding plan that has not happened uh, does not materialize, I think uh, it can be made known and go ahead and educate the project by ourselves. So, by Feb end, if, if there's no deal stitch, then yeah, end of will be funded by you. Correct. I think we are very confident to add a little bit on, we are very confident that can deal can go through maybe in the next 10 days. Uh, by 15th of February itself, we are through. 
and we will take a decision and then we will come back and explain to all of you in the next 15 days got it sir thank you so much okay yeah. thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question the next question is from the line of abhi amarda from yashwini securities please go ahead hello good morning am i audible yes ha uh, so i just wanted to get an idea about what is the debt guidance and uh, what is the current debt levels that we received a mention that your debt levels will be around 1 to 1.5 times of ebitda so what is it at currently okay So the current debt outstanding add on debt is 705 crores. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, guidance on the debt uh, will remain the same. We will raise some debt for funding our expansion projects. And this uh, Malad facility that is coming up in Mumbai. So in case if the deal does not go through then uh, debt will be required to fund that right? Or will uh, mostly it will be from internal revenue? Okay. Are you referring to Malad? In the yes. hello, in the, hello. Yeah, hello. which did you say? Did you say Malad or did I hear it wrong? No, no, I'm saying the Mumbai. Uh, hello, Mumbai. Yeah, the Thane Mumbai capacity. Yeah, the Thane facility. Thane facility, we are yeah, very confident. we are very confident in the next 10 days we will able to let you know and as uh, we are talking about as we promised before the debt ebitda may not able to cross 1 to 1.5 okay okay thank you so much uh, apart from this just to answer the earlier question which uh, some investor has asked about uh, income from pharmacy it is about 30% of the total uh, income which we are having as of 30 uh, for the quarter end of 31st december we have reported 690 crore of which 185 crore is from income from pharmacy just to answer the earlier question thank you a reminder to all participants you may press star and one to ask question the next question is from the line of hari ms from evendus park please go ahead Good morning. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, my first question is on uh, Sunshine. Uh, there seems to be a quarter-on-quarter quarter as well as uh, YOI decline in our pub at Sunshine. So, uh, is is this an impact of the uh, relocation that we have done? But when I look at the occupancy, it seems to be in line with uh, the previous quarter. So, just trying to understand what's happening there. So on sunshine, um, I, the 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 Shivaji facility has done fairly well. Uh, I mean, there's been sequential growth uh, on the Shivaji facility. We have seen a significant impact in the Bilbao facility during the shifting. Uh, so, if you imagine, uh, the revenue has been about 15% in uh, in that facility. Uh, a lot of uh, you know, we have to run the, both the facilities for a while, so there is a little bit of a confusion among patients. Uh, and I'm sure, unfortunately, Dr. Gurwar Reddy was on leave because of the advice of his father for almost 15 to 20 days. So that led to a decline in 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 volume of work uh, at the Sunshine facility. Okay. And, and, and Dr. Abhine, uh, now that we're getting uh, closer to the commissioning of the Nashik Hospital, uh, can you talk a bit about uh, you know our our uh, the uh, operational activities in terms of hiring of doctors uh, and and uh, uh and if you can also give some color on the kind of losses that we should think of uh, from this facility for a 525 right i think uh, so uh, meeting with doctors has been quite encouraging we've been meeting with them for the last uh, one two months uh, there is a good traction among uh, doctors who want to come as shareholders Uh, and doctors who want to come uh, as non shareholders, but you know, come and meet the department. Uh, we are looking at operationalizing it in the next uh, uh, two to three months, uh, three to four months, and uh, by end of uh, March we should uh, kind of finalize a lot of the doctor contracts. Uh, so I think in the next semester call we will we'll probably be able to give you a better update on 
and the tie up with doctors and how the uh, trajectory for growth could potentially look like. Okay. And then last one on Bangalore, uh, the 415 beds that you've gathered for uh, commissioning uh, towards uh, 25. Could you speak a little louder? I, I, I didn't have yeah. any request. Yeah, yeah. It's on, it's on Bangalore, uh, where we have guided for uh, commissioning around 400 beds uh, towards the end of FI25. Uh, and I understand there are two hospitals that uh, we, uh, we are targeting there. So if you can give some breakup in terms of uh, you know, the, the timelines for each of those and, and also the spends uh, for, for both the assets. So at this point in time, we have Soul Space, which is uh, which will which is Bangalore, the one that we have officially announced, which is 415 uh, 415 beds. We are uh, on track to have that also operational by Q4 of FI 25, along with uh, the Spade facility. This will be around uh, 420 430 uh, on beds. Uh, the other facility, the work on ground is happening, but uh, we have not been able to uh, uh, sign the contract yet. Uh, that is more a OIM uh, uh, contract with, with a local pro uh, local provider. Um, so you know maybe in the next uh, and they have been occupied with uh, some permissions that they are getting for the hospital and the medical college. By uh, by I think April May we should be able to sign that contract and then we we'll make it. So this this 415 beds is for the first hospital in Bangalore. Yeah, which the hospital is for that one. All right, all right. Thanks, Thank you. The next question is on the line of Dinesh from INS and INC. Please go ahead. This is Dinesh. You are unmuted. Please go for your question. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, am I audible? Yes. There you are. Yeah. So, sir, actually in previous uh, quarters, uh, the argument has said that uh, the main growth in Andhra would be coming from mother and care segment and uh, as well as oncology segment. So, uh, how how's the traction in mother and care segment uh, right now currently? Can we see any positive traction? And uh, also, can you please comment on why the cash flow unit which was commenced previously? Uh, the management has said that uh, it would be negative for the complete year, I uh, and negative for the complete year. So, is, uh, can we see any positive traction in the Vizal Gastro Unit group? So, Vizal Gastro Unit is starting to do well. Uh, I think this quarter the losses have come down to as low as 30-40 lakhs. I think in, in the next one, two quarters, it, it, should be fully, it should fully turn around and uh, become a bit of positive. Uh, the revenue growth has been quite handy, but again, because of the cycle of the that in Vizac, uh, there has been some impact in the last quarter. As far as uh, mother and child in Andhra is concerned, it's we are fully operational in uh, two of our facilities, one in Karnal and one in Vizac. Uh, we are, like we said, we are adding ground uh, expansion in each of our hospitals. So over the next uh, 24 to 36 months, we will see. Uh, 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 50 to 60 beds across each of our hospitals go up and in some facilities much bigger. Uh, that's when we will start seeing more growth coming in from oncology and mother and child. Okay, sir. Good, sir. Got it, sir. And uh, my second question is on uh, Sunshine Hospital. So, uh, as we move to the new uh, back and back building, so can we see any uh, operational uh, uh, decline in uh, current quarter or uh, in the first half of uh, FI25? In the, uh, no, I think we have, we have some continual lag that will be there in Q4, but after that, I think it should uh, stabilize because by then we would have uh, completely completed the full transition. Uh, patients would have also be aware about this and things would have settled down in the new facility. Okay, so actually uh, the management has stated previously that Sunshine uh, would reach a EBITDA margin of 30%. Uh, so currently uh, looking at the performance of Sunshine, uh, uh, I think uh, it is ra right on track uh, to meet that uh, guidance. Uh, is it true, sir? Could you come again, please? Uh, can you follow the question? 
Yeah, actually, previously the management has guided that uh, Sunshine's EBITDA would reach 30 percent. Uh, so, looking at the current performance of Sunshine, uh, it was actually doing. Yeah, yeah, we are in the long term. We are pretty confident that uh, we will be able to get to a 30 percent EBITDA margin at Sunshine. So, I mean, uh, at least in the next financial year, sir, by the next financial year. Yes, we should. We should be able to. Uh, get to the same number of Yeah, got it, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Mathur from HDSC. Nikhil, fine. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for the follow up. Um, on on Nasik, uh, just uh, am I getting my numbers right? So, so we are looking for a bed capacity of 280, 280 beds, right? In, in FI25? Correct. Okay. That's the full okay. capacity. Okay, and, and this would be available for the full year, or you expect some startup time, and uh, it it might take uh, take a few months. Uh, I think we're looking at May. Uh, we're looking to operation exit in May or towards the end of May. Uh, so we may. So I think from second quarter we'll have it fully. Understood. And and I think one of the participants asked you on the on the doctor recruitment process in Nasik. Uh, so just just wanted to understand where would we be getting the talent from uh, in Nasik? Sorry, I'm not that aware of the existing hospital landscape of that city. So if you can just help us understand a bit, uh, what is the talent pool available? Where you will be getting it? What are the organized competition that you see in that market from other major players? The organized uh, competition is largely from. Uh, Medicover Hospital. And Sayadri Hospital, which are the two large facilities there. Uh, both of them are 300 beds each. Uh, and there is a good amount, a good supply of talent in, in the Nasik market. Some of the strong established clinicians have shown a lot of interest. There is some of, uh, a lot of uh, doctors are willing to shut down their nursing homes and move to a larger hospital, uh, such as King, and be able to meet a department. Uh, and, and take things forward. So I, we, we are not seeing uh, any challenge, uh, major challenge for the initial few specialties that we are going to launch. But as we keep improving the kind of work that we are going to start doing, the first care, personal care work, we will look at start. We will start looking at doctors of Nasik or in the neighborhood of Nasik who are practicing in different markets. We will try to start attracting them back to their hometown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, and sir, to begin with, uh, like I said, there you was know, the basic work that happening to us work. Uh, there are enough doctors available in Nasik uh, uh, practicing their, either in their hospital or in competition. Okay, understood. Uh, and sir, uh, we have seen off late uh, in the north, especially let's say in Lucknow, um, new facilities, green fees facilities that have been set up, they have bugged the past trend of five, six years of gestation. Rather, they have kind of reaching an optimum uh, margin levels in a two to, two to three year time, time period itself. Uh, what are your thoughts on whether that is the supply demand mismatch in a city like Nasik or some other city that we are looking to enter as well? Um, so, uh, do you think that it could be a wider country trend of supply demand imbalance due to which the gestations of greenfield setups can be faster than what we have seen in the past? See, can I take? Yeah, yeah, good. The five, six years of a Greenfield project was there about a decade back. The reasons were, at that time, the talent was not there, the technology was not there, people's awareness in healthcare was not there. Now, today, there are talent that are available. It all depends upon the number of specialties that you start in a Greenfield project. It shorten the reach on point. Now, anywhere, wherever you start uh, a green field of unknown place, you may even come down to one or two years. Places like Nasik, even still further come down, I believe it will be less than a year. Uh, am I getting it right that you, you, you are suggesting that uh, a better break even for Nasik can be within a year as well? I think so. Understood. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Laksh 
me on right now from Tunga Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, so one question related to your employee cost. I see that uh, employee costs are actually inched up uh, uh, on a nine-month basis, also on a uh, quarter-on-quarter or you know annual or a sequential basis, right? So um, can you just help me understand what is the band, uh, as the percentage of revenue you like to keep the employee cost at? So uh, there are two reasons that like, the cost went up. One we had, like we said, we had invested in uh, King's Cuddle with Chikilva and because of which we had to recruit more number of people uh, as we launched the hospital. And uh, number two, uh, because we were doing, uh, uh, we were also starting, uh, we were uh, start, uh, starting down the old function facility and uh, shifting to our department there. So we had to run operations in, in both the hospitals. So we had to recruit more number of people to be able to run the operation. Plus, uh, given uh, uh, the new facilities in Bombay, Bangalore, uh, uh, Bombay and Bangalore and Nasik are getting operational soon, uh, we have uh, picked up some staff that, uh, for each of those hospitals in our current payroll, uh, which will then be moved to those hospitals when those hospitals are operational. This is to bring them and uh, bring them up to speed with the system we're processing. Got it. So this employee cost would be fairly fixed in nature, right? There's no variable component of it. No, 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 no. It's all fixed. And, and what is the band you like to keep it at? See, right now it's around 17.8% on a nine-month basis. So what is the uh, band you like to operate in? We continue to remain uh, the same way, uh, like it has been for the last year. And in terms of the consultancy fee, which, is, which comes in the other expenses, um, uh, approximately what has been that uh, number you keep in mind uh, as a percentage of revenues? Given that we have a lot of new facilities in like Sunshine and Lapu where the water cost is slightly higher, I think around 20-22% uh, is where we think that we will be able to complete the deliver the water cost. Got it, got it. Uh, the second question is that um, uh, what is the mix of uh, OP revenues and IP revenues for us on a nine month basis? It's the ballpark number should be around 75% of IP revenue, 75 to 80, and 25 20% of OP revenue. Got it, got it. And is it uh, uh, how it has trended in the last nine months? Has it uh, changed a bit? When you compare it last year? No, it, it's the main the same, it hasn't changed. So, and last question uh, related to the pharmacy revenues. Uh, what's the kind of gross profit margin you make on uh, pharmacy? Hello? Yeah, in terms of your pharmacy revenue, which you gave a number that's around 30% of your revenue, um, what kind of gross margins you make on, on pharmacy revenues? Yeah, we, we'll look at that number and come back to you, obviously. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and one last question. Uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, you're entering into markets like Bangalore, uh, which is uh, which is highly uh, competitive and also there is a higher uh, um, you know uh, critical care bed per uh, population. How are you thinking about uh, uh, getting into these new markets where there is uh, already a strong competition like Manipal or Apollo or Fortis in these places? Well, I did mention earlier in in all our calls, we are entering Bangalore, we are entering those micro markets that are still underserved. Uh, so it's not Apollo, Manipal, they're all present in Bangalore. But Bangalore is a very large city with multiple catchment areas and multiple micro markets. So we believe there are a few unserved and untapped markets and the city is growing. So while we enter the market using these untapped uh, geographies, we further ex we continue to expand in the micro market over a period of time. And that's why we call uh, uh, the South Indian city. And, and how do you uh, stand out yourself in this market in terms of attracting uh, uh, both talent as well as uh, customers? Uh, how do you uh, uh, scale up in these markets? 
Yeah, I think it's, it's the same thing. Right? You, you, you come up with a good hospital, uh, with good infra, good technology. Uh, you know, even if you look at the technology that is available today in Bangalore, it's still much lesser than uh, some of the other South Indian states. Or uh, the number of 500 million hospitals that are available in Bangalore today are still less. So if you're able to get to the right uh, micro market, uh, you'll be able to attract a lot of doctors who are practicing in smaller hospitals uh, and not being able to do full justice. You'll also move to larger hospitals because you get better support from multidisciplinary approach. You get uh, more uh, support on the technology front. Uh, this will this will help uh, uh, improve clinical outcomes for them as well. And that, that's how we look at attracting doctors. Thanks, Agreen. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jivani from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, hi, Dr. Binay. Uh, given that we have relocated the franchising to the bag to become paid, uh, what happens to the old uh, Paradise campus? Any plans for that? Yeah. So, uh, Rahul, uh, in Sikkimada, we have three blocks. So we are demolishing block one and block two uh, to add uh, another tower there, which will give us incremental beds. We haven't finalized how many more beds we want to add there. Uh, but because we are demolishing those two buildings, a lot of the services that were being rendered there are now being moved to the old Sunshine Hospital. And next, we are also starting a new service uh, on the rehab front. Uh, which is 100, 100 beds uh, dedicated for rehab services. Uh, part of that cost is also uh, getting incurred in, 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 this, in this quarter report uh, for refurbishing the Sunshine Hospital uh, to, to launch the rehab services at that hospital. And when the new facility for exchange is ready uh, in the next three, four years, we will then shut down that hospital completely and move everything back to the King's Hospital. Okay, sure. And on Sunshine, you said about 30% EBITDA margin. Now, part of this margin benefit used to, as in, was expected to accrue from the rental savings which you would have seen because of this relocation. Now, but uh, given the fact that now you are retaining the Paradise campus as well, so are you still confident of margins at Sunshine accruing to that 30% kind of a number? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I think uh, this is irrespective of that. Uh, irrespective of that, we are pretty confident that sometime we will be able to get to 30% in the Despite this, uh, campus still being retained, right? Correct, yeah. And this is a temporary thing. This is only for the next three, to three years or three to three years. Uh, once our facility is there, we will again surrender this and move back. Sure, sure, sure. And just one request to Sachin. Uh, Sachin, in terms of segmental EBITDA disclosures, we have provided the EBITDA on the post in there and include other income. Whereas earlier we used to provide the same number on a pre in there basis and X of other income. So if you can provide that as well, that will be helpful. Sure, sure. We will do that also. Sure, sure. Sir. Thank you. That's a comment. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harsh from Bandhan AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Abhinay. Good morning. Uh, just one question from my side. Uh, in terms of your views, uh, in particular for this cashless everywhere uh, news that is uh, floating around, so there are some certain guidelines that GIC has come uh, about with. So just from your uh, understanding for the sector, for the hospitals, obviously for the patients, it is beneficial, but just your uh, thoughts on this cashless everywhere part. Well, the patients is definitely beneficial, for the hospitals is also beneficial where a few of the insurance companies have, you know, uh, I think very really stringent on the uh, empowerment norms. Uh, but we still have to figure out how this happens. You know, we, we still have to, uh, we, we've been talking to few of the, the insurance companies, but we yet to see full clarity on how this will be executed. At what pricing will it be done and, and so on and so forth. So the on the ground work is uh, still yet to be done. There is a lot more to be done before it gets implemented. Correct, correct, correct. There's a lot more clarity to be achieved and uh, lots more work to be done. 
ओके अपने थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ धीरेश पाठक फ्रॉम व्हाइट ऑफ प्लीज गो अहेड या थैंक यू फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी सर सर दिस इज स्लाइड 28 ऑन एपेक्स ऑन नासिक 250 करोड एंड थाने 250 करोड एंड दिस इज ऑल इन एपेक्स साइट इंक्लूडिंग द लैंड एंड द बिल्डिंग एंड रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द फाइनेंसिंग अरेंजमेंट दिस इज द टोटल प्रोजेक्ट कॉस्ट राइट मनीष तुझे क्यों नहीं लगी इसका कॉस्ट लग गया है so nasik the slide 28 mentions 300 beds 250 crores of capex right so this 250 crores is including uh, the value of the land and the building which the partner brought in or this is excluding that <coughs> uh, it's the total project cost total project cost right and similarly the thane project also 50 crores is the total project cost right assuming the land and the building is owned by Uh, right. No, in Thane it is not the total project cost. Actually, in Nasik is concerned, it is the total project cost. So Thane, what how much will it go up by if you have to spend on the land in the building? It, it will go up by another two hundred crores. Another two hundred crores, and that is what we are doing. Yeah, yeah. We are doing it fully by ourselves. Understood. Okay. And uh, maybe I missed this earlier. I think the audio from my side was not that good. You were giving some explanation. If you don't mind, can you just explain, like in let's say slide twenty, right? The Telangana, the main cluster, the revenues are up, right? Quarter year over year for the quarter. So, for example, we did almost twenty crore more revenues in this quarter in the Telangana cluster versus we did in the same quarter last year. But the beta in absolute term is down. So there is some cost. I think you were giving an explanation. I didn't fully understand. Similarly, in uh, AP cluster also, the revenues are up, but the absolute beta is down. So there is some cost, which if you can just explain again, what are the one-time costs that are there? So are you asking me what what are the one-time costs that we are incurred? Uh, I didn't. I couldn't hear you. Yes. So uh, if you see slide uh, three. Yet, for revenue growth, uh, and uh, we we've been adding a lot of new specialities and a lot of new doctors uh, across all our hospitals. Um, you know, some of the significant ones are the mother and child ones at the Kim Sikkimida facility. So all of this on a sequential uh, in Q1 and Q2, also the doctor cost has gone up, but correspondingly the revenue uh, uh, grew too. But in Q3, the doctor cost continued to remain the same as Q2. Uh, but given that that dip in revenue because of the factors that I had mentioned earlier, uh, we are you know we couldn't play play out the operating leverage. So though the revenue grew up, uh, the beta margins have dipped because we have invested in these doctors and revenues have not flown through because of uh, multiple other reasons. So even in the AP cluster, you added new doctors. So those of I thought the mature clusters and uh, you know we are not adding new. No, no, they are mature um, clusters from an age point of view, but it, there is a lot of growth that is still left, right? In in Andhra, where we are adding what called the mother and child, there are many more specialties that we still are not being able to fully uh, mature in Andhra facilities. So that and it's a continuous thing. I mean, year on year basis, we keep on continuing to add more and more doctors. Okay, and one last question. So in this slide, let's say twenty, you show bed capacity. Capacity operational beds. So already running at very high occupancy. Why don't what we convert more of the capacity into operational? There is still you know 125 beds that can be added. Uh, same in the under cluster. Uh, you know another 250, 260 beds can be added from capacity to operational. So what is the constraint from converting them from capacity to operational? Nothing. I think we we will uh, operationalize them soon. In the next few quarters, we will operationalize them. Okay. How many will move from capacity to operational in the next two quarters in these two clusters? But we should uh, we should bring in another hundred and fifty. Another hundred and fifty more beds. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.
As that was the last question, I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you very much for all the stakeholders who has given uh, good views and uh, their concerns. And uh, we are very, very pretty well understood the healthcare in a better way. And as we move on to a new area, it is not that in the last uh, one quarter or two quarters we will put a force on that. Before entering into the new areas like Bangalore, Thane, Nashik, Nagpur and many other places, we do a lot of uh, homework, identify the talent is available or not, the specialties that is lacking in the geography and all those things. Few of those things we are not able to convey properly now or because of various reasons. When we meet in the coming couple of months, we will come personally and meet all of you. We will explain how we can able to turn around. Even if you take about two decades back when uh, Hyderabad was started, many people have the idea that uh, it's already super saturated at that time. It was a big place like so many other chains were there at the time we started. Now we evolved as a number one player in Hyderabad. And that we have our own plans of uh, making this in a new geography also uh, very well. We give a lot more confidence on new people. And we are very happy the way it is moving. We are very, very happy that we can able to deliver what we thought. Thank you very much for your patient hearing for all the and concerns will definitely be with you. Thank you. On behalf of IISL Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your line.